Acclaimed as the pinnacle of Korean cinema, this film stands out as the only one I can watch repeatedly without experiencing aesthetic fatigue. After its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, the entire venue resonated with applause for a continuous 15 minutes. The movie is based on real events. Welcome to Oriental Frames. Thank you for your watching and subscribing. Old Ha, deep in his sleep, was abruptly awakened by a series of slaps. Faced with yet another debt collector, Old Ha tried to sit up, only to receive another slap, as his debts left him no choice but to remain silent. The debtor resorted to threatening him with Old Ha's daughter. Unable to endure it any longer, Old Ha donned his coat and left the room. However, the debts burdening Old Ha were not without reason. In Yenbian City in northeastern China, where a majority are of Korean descent, there exists a significant economic disparity. Consequently, many Yenbian women opt to work in South Korea. Not long ago, Old Ha's wife proposed working in South Korea to contribute more to the family income. Old Ha borrowed a high-interest loan to send her there, but after her departure, she disappeared without a trace, leaving all debts squarely on his shoulders. As night fell, Old Ha found himself back at the casino because it was the only means he could think of to swiftly repay his debts. However, luck was not on his side tonight. Watching the hard-earned money he made from a day of taxi driving vanish in an instant, Old Ha reached the breaking point. Yet, those at the gambling table paid no heed to his plight. Without money, they insisted he leave, further intensifying Old Ha's growing anxiety. <laughs> With this sudden eruption of emotions, Old Ha lifted the table and swung it towards the other person. Fortunately, the crowded casino prevented the situation from escalating further, but Old Ha's fierce fighting scene caught the eye of the casino owner, Old Myung. In the early hours of the morning, Old Ha, with a bruised and swollen face, returned home. Staring at the shattered wedding photo with his wife, Old Ha, in a daze, fell asleep in the living room. But the next day, upon waking up, the debt collector surprisingly mentioned some good news to share. Soon after, he was taken to Old Myun. It turned out that the conflict at the casino the previous day made Old Myun appreciate Old Ha's fighting skills. After a brief self-introduction, Old Myun took him aside and explained the reason for bringing him over. But Old Ha merely glanced at him, dismissing it as a joke. However, when Old Myun went on to mention that, if things went smoothly, not only could he help clear Old Ha's debts, but he could also assist in searching for his wife along the way, Old Ha began to seriously contemplate. Perhaps, this could be his only chance at a fresh start. However, Old Myun followed up by telling him it was crucial to make a decision promptly, or he would find someone else. Old Ha wanted to discuss the matter with someone, and the only person he could think of was his mother. Despite leading a similarly impoverished life, his mother always earnestly advised Old Ha to look forward. Time spent with family always seems to pass quickly. Watching his daughter sleep peacefully at night, Old Ha thought staying with his family wasn't a bad idea. However, when he closed his eyes, all he could see were images of his wife with someone else. This night, he woke up once again from a disturbing dream, realizing he had to take action. Late at night, Old Ha went to the casino. However, just as he received the operational details from Old Myun, he was threatened. If he tried to escape using this information, not only would he get nothing, but his family would also be in danger. Next, Old Myun tossed an envelope at him containing a prepaid bank book. Old Myun promised to reveal the bank book's password once Old Ha successfully obtained the target's thumb. This close-to-home payment made Old Ha unable to hold back a smile. Early the next morning, he set off, unaware of the dangers of this overseas journey. After many twists and turns, he arrived at the boat location Old Myun had told him about. After a long day and night, the boat finally crossed the Yellow Sea. Watching the well-lit shore, Old Ha surprisingly felt a twinge of excitement. But at dawn, while having breakfast at the pier, Snakehead informed him that the boat would return in 10 days. If he missed it, there would be no way back. Looking at the embarkation point on paper, Old Ha had no choice but to nod in agreement. From the pier to Seoul, it was already night. Despite the bustling streets of Seoul, Old Ha chose a secluded hotel to stay. Inside, he immediately wrote down the operational details. The next day, following the address on the paper, Old Ha entered a building. He quickly searched the mailboxes on the ground floor and learned that the target, Old Kim, resided on the sixth floor. However, when he entered the elevator, the button for the sixth floor seemed unresponsive. Helplessly, he pressed the button for the fifth floor, and when the elevator doors opened, a metal gate blocked his way. The elevator only went up to this point. 
He had to cross the street to the building opposite, observing through the windows but still finding no useful information. So, patiently, he stood by the window until late at night. Hungry and cold, Old Ha observed the lady on the sixth floor alone at home. Now, all he had to do was wait for Old Kim to return. But seeing the convenience store downstairs, Old Ha couldn't bear the hunger any longer and rushed downstairs, unaware that a black car had just passed him by. After Old Ha finished shopping and walked out of the convenience store, he found the door tightly shut, and the lights on the sixth floor were out. Old Ha felt disappointed, but he noted the approximate time Old Kim returned home. The next day, Old Ha didn't forget the main purpose of his journey, which was to find his wife. He visited the restaurant where his wife had worked, but the boss said she had resigned and left. Through persistent inquiries, luckily, he learned where she had gone after leaving. In the evening, it was Old Ha's hunting time again. However, he waited until 3 a.m., but no one returned. This waiting game wasn't sustainable. Old Ha returned to the iron gate, attempting to force it open, but after several unsuccessful attempts, he considered ringing the doorbell. However, this seemed like walking into a trap. Helpless in front of the iron gate, Old Ha took the elevator back to the ground floor, only to find him unlocking the door. Old Ha froze, wasn't this old Kim, the person he had been anxiously waiting for? But when faced with his actual target, Old Ha became indecisive. Old Kim questioned why he was there, and Old Ha couldn't provide a coherent answer. Old Kim quickly sensed his abnormality, and then Old Kim's driver burst in but was stopped by Old Kim. It turned out Old Kim thought Old Ha was just seeking shelter from the cold inside the building. Instead of pressing further, Old Kim handed him some money before leaving, suggesting he find a nearby hotel to sleep. However, Old Kim's kindness didn't shake Old Ha's resolve. Through careful observation, he noticed the driver only left after confirming the extinguished sensor light on the sixth floor. It was now 3.10 a.m., and Old Ha hurriedly returned to the hotel to record this information. With these details, a meticulous plan began to take shape in his mind. The next day, instead of searching for his wife, Old Ha returned to the vicinity of Old Kim's building to conduct the final rehearsal for the murder. After completing all the rehearsals, Old Ha returned to the ground floor. As he stepped out of the elevator, he brushed shoulders with a well-dressed woman. Watching the elevator stop at the fifth floor, Old Ha confirmed she was Old Kim's wife. This reminded him of his own wife's betrayal, was she now with another man? Following the clues left by the restaurant owner, Old Ha inquired with a photo of his wife and finally learned from a sushi restaurant that the person in the photo often visited with a man who lived nearby and delivered goods in a white truck. His suspicions were confirmed, and Old Ha's heart trembled with anger. He vowed to confront his wife face to face. However, as the return time approached, Old Ha hadn't found her. But on the second to last day before the return, he finally spotted a white truck delivering goods. Old Ha's intuition told him that this was the truck the restaurant owner mentioned. He walked up to the car and stared at the driver. Could his wife be with this bald man? Old Ha couldn't believe it. He dared not trust, so he stopped the driver and pulled out a photo of his wife from his bag. As the driver saw the photo, his face suddenly changed. Old Ha unleashed his fury, kicking the driver with all his might, as if a rush of anger had finally found an outlet. Immediately after, he went to the location the driver had mentioned. Anxiously, he only wanted to find his wife immediately. Despite searching every corner of the restaurant, he found no trace of her. It wasn't until the restaurant manager stopped him that he realized he had been deceived again. Fortunately, he learned the driver's address from the manager. Old Ha arrived at the driver's door, only to find the door unlocked. Carefully opening the door, he entered a dimly lit room. It was a mess, kitchen utensils scattered on the floor, broken glass, blood-stained underwear, and more. There was even a photo frame. He picked it up and saw a photo of his daughter. He quickly knocked on the neighboring door, hoping to gather information from the neighbors. However, apart from learning about a quarrel an hour ago, he found no other clues. After searching downstairs for a long time, the only response he received was the cold emptiness of the street. Helpless, he had to return to the room, took out a watermelon knife from the drawer, turned off the lights, and sat in a dark corner, waiting. If this man had truly harmed his wife, Old Ha was determined to make him pay with blood. However, waiting until dawn, there was still no sign of anyone. He had to call Old Myun, pleading for a few more days before the return, explaining that his wife hadn't been found yet. Old Myun, unmoved, threatened to send someone to his mother's house if things didn't go well. Old Ha knew he had no other choice. That night, clinging to the last thread of hope, he handed some money to the neighbor next door, hoping he could help delay his wife's return. This way, after completing his mission, he might still have a chance to take his wife away. 
Then he picked up the watermelon knife from the room and tucked it into his pocket. With only one day left before his return, Old Ha, after confirming that there was no one else in the building, carefully made his way towards the front door. However, halfway there, he suddenly saw two suspicious figures. Old Ha immediately turned back to see them acting furtively, looking around cautiously. Quickly, Old Ha hid behind the wall, continuing to observe cautiously. The other two were also careful, prompting Old Ha to find an even safer vantage point. After a brief exchange, the two strangers stopped between the fourth and fifth floors. It was the exact location where Old Ha planned to carry out the murder. Without much time to ponder, a black car approached from a distance, and he promptly hid again. Old Kim got out of the car, locked the door, and went upstairs as usual. As the motion sensor lights lit up, shadows flashed across the windows. They were undoubtedly after Old Kim strangely, the lights on the upper floors flickered, but the driver seemed indifferent to the situation. It wasn't until a person fell from above that the driver finally went upstairs. The sudden turn of events caught Old Ha off guard, but he knew he had to act now. Holding the watermelon knife, he carefully climbed the stairs, blood continuously dripping from above. Old Ha reached the scene and saw the driver walking above him, noticing Old Kim covered in blood. What had happened? The driver suddenly turned and spotted him. Though confused, the driver showed from his eyes that he had no intention of letting any witnesses go. However, Old Ha, with his extensive combat experience, was no ordinary onlooker. In no time, he forcefully pushed the driver down the stairs, uncaring of his fate. Next, he quickly approached Old Kim. Though he hadn't killed the men, taking Old Kim's thumb was enough to consider the mission accomplished. However, as he stuffed the thumb into his pocket, he hesitated upon seeing Old Kim's wife upstairs. Instead of silencing her, Old Ha quickly ran downstairs. But at that moment, police sirens started wailing outside, forcing Old Ha to run back upstairs. Fortunately, Old Kim's wife hadn't locked the door. He entered Old Kim's house and immediately climbed out of the window. At this moment, the police had broken in through the door. Old Ho climbed down the exterior pipe, but the police quickly spotted him. Subsequently, the police below surrounded him, and Old Ho's position was completely exposed. With no way out, he had to retreat back into the building. Hearing police in the adjacent apartment, Old Ho had no time to hesitate. He lifted the nearby computer and smashed the window. However, upon reaching the window, he found even more police below. He had no choice but to jump. Fortunately, the police cars below acted as a cushion, preventing Old Ho from getting injured. However, the police quickly closed in on him. He sprinted to another street as several police cars chased after him. Thinking he had created some distance, Old Ho suddenly found more police surrounding him. With no other choice, he ran onto the main road, allowing the police cars to accelerate. Yet, unexpectedly, the next moment, Old Ho managed to escape them. When he arrived at the return address, he discovered it was a construction site. He double-checked the address, a sense of unease growing within him. He tried calling Old Myun, but the number was not in service. Realizing he had been betrayed, Old Ho refused to sit idly by. He retraced the bus route to the nearby dock, found a small motel, rested for the night, and continued his journey to the dock the next day. However, halfway there, the police had set up a checkpoint and stopped the vehicle. As the police were about to board the bus, Old Ho panicked. He could only use the brim of his cap to cover his face. The police quickly noticed his unusual behavior and asked for his ID, Old Ho, however, was only thinking about how to escape. Watching the young police officer in front of him, Old Ha seized the opportunity to tackle him, swiftly kicking the nearby car window and leaping outside. However, as he landed, a gun was pointed directly at him, leaving Old Ha unable to make any sudden moves. He cautiously stood up. At that moment, the police officer unexpectedly looked back at his colleague. Seizing this chance, Old Ha quickly tried to disarm him. Realizing the situation was spiraling out of control, the police officer signaled his colleagues to shoot, but the bullet ended up hitting the officer himself. The police officers behind him were shocked, and Old Ha was momentarily stunned. Seeing their attention diverted, Old Ha knew it was his only chance to escape. However, the police quickly regained their composure and fired several shots in his direction. Old Ha was hit, but fortunately, the injury wasn't critical. He continued running into the woods, with the police in hot pursuit. As more police officers gathered below, Old Ha desperately ran deeper into the forest. Soon, a large contingent of law enforcement initiated a thorough search. 
Strangely, a group of thugs appeared at the scene. Their leader, thinking Old Ha was hired by the driver, sought to eliminate him before the police traced him back, not realizing that Old Ha was manipulated by Old Myun. Finally reaching the depths of the woods, Old Ha tore off his sock, enduring the pain to bandage the gunshot wound on his arm. While the physical pain was bearable, the sense of helplessness and despair overwhelmed him. All Old Ha wanted was to find his wife and return to a normal life, but as long as he was alive, he had no intention of giving up. Navigating through the jungle, climbing hills, and relying on the map he carried, Old Ha traversed mountains until he reached the pier where he initially boarded the boat. However, upon opening the doors, he found the place deserted. After confirming multiple times, he searched for food in the freezer, finding only two carrots as everything else had spoiled. Suddenly, he noticed a box of potatoes nearby. Hungry, Old Ha started eating the potatoes while watching TV, savoring the rare moment of tranquility. Unsure of his next steps, he suddenly noticed that the lighter in the room resembled the one discarded by the snakehead that day. Following this clue, he traced the hotel from the lighter. Sure enough, near a car, Old Ha found the snakehead. A surge of anger rushed over him, and he wanted the snakehead to face the consequences of deceiving him. Questioning why they did this, the snakehead claimed to have acted according to Old Myun's orders. However, this was clearly not the answer Old Ha wanted, and he continued to vent his anger forcefully. Nevertheless, Old Ha spared his life because he needed the men to make a call to arrange for a boat, enabling him to return to China. Under Old Ha's coercion, the men had no choice but to comply. The return journey was set for tonight at a different pier. Old Ha, after ensuring the men wasn't up to any mischief, felt a sigh of relief. Before departing in the evening, he looked at the thumb he had severed, as if it were mocking his foolishness. At that moment, a news report came on the television, stating that a middle-aged Korean Chinese woman had been murdered, and surprisingly, the perpetrator was the driver of the white truck. Upon recalling the blood-stained and filthy room, Old Ha felt a strong sense of unease. Could his wife have been killed by this man? He hastily called the police station to confirm the identity of the deceased. However, besides mechanical responses from the customer service, they didn't provide any information. Frustrated, Old Ha knew that visiting the police station in person might confirm the news, but it was akin to walking into a trap. After meeting the contact as planned, Old Ha was taken to the pier for the boat. Unbeknownst to him, simultaneously, Old Myun, along with his men, arrived at Old Ha's recent residence, intending to eliminate him completely. The gang leader, unable to find Old Ha, decided to eliminate Old Myun, his superior, to prevent any traces leading back to him if Old Ha was caught by the police. So, the gang leader dispatched his subordinates to kill Old Myun in the Chinese-Korean border region. However, they unwittingly picked the wrong target. In a three-on-one ambush, only one of them survived. When Old Myun learned about their intention to silence him, he brought his men to South Korea. He arranged a meeting with the gang leader, proposing a deal, eliminate Old Ha and keep silent, all for the price of 30 million renminbi. Faced with this semi-coercive transaction, the gang leader had no choice but to reluctantly comply. Old Myun's first destination was the pier where Old Ha initially arrived. Although he didn't find Old Ha, he discovered the captive driver. Meanwhile, when Old Ha arrived at the new pier, he noticed something peculiar about the demeanor of the contact. However, with no alternative, he had to trust them. Shortly after, he was taken to a container, and as he entered, he noticed a tag from Tokyo, Japan. Suddenly, the people outside forcefully pushed the door, and realizing he had been deceived once again, Old Ha erupted in anger. He managed to open a gap in the door, lifted the person outside with all his strength, and then, using a sharp knife, stabbed towards out. Finally, he pushed the door wide open. Realizing it was a trap and anticipating pursuers, Old Ha sprinted desperately toward the pier. To his surprise, the person chasing him turned out to be Old Myun. Spotting Old Ha through the gate, Old Myun saw him as a walking bag of money. Without much time to think, Old Ha had to act quickly as Old Myun and his men prepared to rush in. Surrounded on all sides, he chose to run in the direction with fewer people. After forcefully knocking down two pursuers, he got up and sprinted in the opposite direction. The relentless pursuers, armed with weapons, were numerous, and the path to the pier had no way out. With no alternative, Old Ha darted into a nearby ship. The relentless thugs chased him closely, and every exit was blocked. Arriving at the end of the pier with no escape route, Old Ha had no choice but to turn into the adjacent ship. The pursuers were in hot pursuit, each wielding a dangerous weapon. Upon reaching the ship, Old Ha entered the cabin. Despite knocking down two pursuers, he was still injured, 
and the relentless pursuers closed in. Running into the ship's hold, the pursuers were right behind him. However, when he reached a cabin door, he found it inexplicably locked, and the pursuers caught up. In a desperate struggle, Old Ha took a knife wound to his leg. Managing to grab an axe, he momentarily forced the thugs back. Finally, he opened the cabin door and barricaded himself at the other end. Facing overwhelming numbers, even with the axe, Old Ha couldn't hold them off for long. He fought fiercely while continuing to move forward. During the battle, he sustained another axe wound. Knowing he couldn't afford to stop at this moment, he pressed on. With every last ounce of strength, he climbed onto the deck, swinging the axe wildly. Although outnumbered, his ferocious and determined resistance kept the pursuers at bay. However, facing an overwhelming force, Old Ha was soon forced into a dead end on the deck. At this critical moment, a distant shout suddenly echoed. <laughs> The axe missed Old Myun, and with no other options left, Old Ha turned around and jumped into the sea. Reacting quickly, Old Myun threw another axe, fortunately missing Old Ha by a few centimeters. Seeing that his subordinates hesitated to jump, Old Myun decided to jump into the sea himself. Old Ha, being more adept at swimming, reached the shore after a short time. However, the people who had come off the ship also arrived at his side. Old Ha desperately climbed up the shore and sprinted towards a large truck on the opposite side. Despite the stabbing pain in his injured leg, he managed to throw off the people around him, fell down, and then got back up. He finally entered the driver's cabin of the truck but the pursuers were hot on his heels. At that moment, Old Myun climbed ashore and witnessed Old Ha starting the truck. Old Myun, wielding an axe, rushed to the forefront of the crowd, forcefully pushing aside anyone obstructing him. Nobody escaped his notice. Driven by an even stronger will to survive, Old Ha used his freed left foot to kick away anyone blocking him. Despite landing on the ground, Old Myun did not give up the chase. Old Ha accelerated towards the entrance, but faced with the locked gate, he could only crash through it. Although the gate was successfully knocked down, the truck also overturned after the violent impact. Old Ha, struggling, crawled out of the driver's cabin. Seeing police cars approaching in the distance, he knew he had no time to catch his breath. He immediately approached another nearby car. Meanwhile, Old Myun also chased after him. As Old Ha started the car, Old Myun accelerated, following closely. However, let's not forget, Old Ha was a taxi driver. After successive violent collisions, Old Ha began to tire of the relentless assaults. Following a series of fierce and chaotic collisions, Old Myun, who had climbed down from the car, was covered in wounds. However, besides seeing the approaching police car, he found that Old Ha had disappeared without a trace. Having experienced a life-threatening ordeal, Old Ha's heart had already become numb. Yet, he had already decided on the next destination. On the other side, after failing to catch anyone, Old Myun, still holding back his anger, realized that killing Old Ha to silence him was unnecessary. Thinking about this, he quickly called the gang leader and arranged a meeting. Before that, he planned to take a short nap. However, as he drifted into sleep, he suddenly heard a strange noise outside the door. Old Myun immediately sensed that something was wrong. He quickly picked up a large bone from the ground, stood against the wall behind the door, and as expected, someone rushed in soon. Old Myun began wildly swinging the bone, and anyone attempting to ambush him was quickly incapacitated. The bone, though a melee weapon, could also be used for ranged attacks. Old Myun, like a war god, continued his fierce onslaught even after being stabbed in the abdomen. The upstairs foes were swiftly dealt with, and he proceeded to the ground floor in search of the gang leader. However, there was no sign of him, indicating that he had planned from the start to eliminate Old Myun as well. The bloody combat persisted, and just as Old Myun intended to help his allies across the hall, he was suddenly ambushed from behind. After another intense struggle, Old Myun took down the last opponent. He then poured gasoline, lit newspapers, and set the place ablaze, fueling his internal rage. Unexpectedly, Old Myun, armed with an axe, made his way to the gang leader's hideout. Meanwhile, after Old Ha escaped, he immediately sought confirmation of his wife's death at the police station. Despite the difficulty in identifying the body, the person who made the arrangement informed Old Ha that the deceased was indeed his wife. Devastated, Old Ha accepted, his voice hoarse from agreeing to pay for the funeral. Now aware that his wife's reluctance to send money home wasn't due to unwillingness, but rather the harsh conditions in the supposedly prosperous city, Old Ha understood he could never return. However, this realization fueled his determination to find and eliminate those responsible. First, he went to Old Kim's wife's house, assuring her safety, and gleaned information about Old Kim. 
Through bar staff at Old Kim's workplace, he found the driver's address, expecting to uncover details about his superior. After a thorough search, he discovered an old phone hidden in a bag of rice. Using the recorded phone numbers, he quickly traced them back to contacts, leading to the gang leader. Under brutal interrogation, the subordinate revealed the gang leader's involvement. Simultaneously, the gang leader called Old Ha, expressing his frustration. He had just found out that the person who hired Old Myun wasn't the driver but a man named Kim Yun Wan. This revelation meant the attempt to silence Old Ha was entirely unnecessary, as they had no connection whatsoever. But by the time the gang leader learned the truth, it was too late. He had angered the Yen Bien War God. Old Myun, severely injured, fought his way to the basement, discovering the gang leader. As he descended the stairs alone, more than a dozen people retreated in fear. The gang leader turned pale. On the other side, learning about the gang leader's identity, Old Ha intended to settle the score. However, as he started the car, it was suddenly struck from the side. Old Ha lost consciousness, waking up later in the trunk of a car, overhearing two people in the front discussing how to kill him. Fortunately, he still had the knife in his bag. When the car finally stopped, Old Ha gripped the knife tightly. Simultaneously, with a swift axe throw, Old Myun eliminated everyone in the basement, leaving only the gang leader. In Old Myun's world, money mattered more than life itself. Leaving the gang leader alive meant Old Myun could exchange money for his own life. Politely, he asked the gang leader to go to his home to collect the money. In a society where resistance was futile, the gang leader reluctantly agreed. However, just as the two sat in the car, the gang leader unexpectedly opened the door. Despite having a broken leg, it was his only chance to escape. Old Myun couldn't allow him to get away, but the gang leader, not foolish, engaged in a surprise attack, worsening Old Myun's already severe injuries. Nevertheless, being the Yen Bien war god, Old Myun, choosing money over life, resolved to kill the gang leader. In the heat of Old Myun's rage, the gang leader gradually became motionless. Yet, this final battle drained Old Myun of all his strength. Despite this, he calmly returned to the car. However, after driving a dozen meters, it marked the end of his life's journey. On the other side, Old Ha also suffered a knife wound, but the attacker, evidently not a professional, ended up falling from a high platform and died. Old Ha reached their car, severely injured, but seeking medical help wasn't an option. Inside the car, he discovered a business card. Upon closer inspection, he found the name, Kim Yung Wan. In an instant, he seemed to grasp the truth. What he saw upon getting into the car was two lifeless bodies. The gang leader seemed to have a faint breath, muttering that Old Kim had slept with his woman. By this point, Old Ha had almost unraveled the entire situation, except for the identity of the person on the business card. Before seeking him out, Old Ha didn't forget to take his wife's ashes. Holding the urn, it provided him with the most peaceful sleep. The next day, he went to the address on the business card, a savings bank. Looking at the corresponding name on the counter, he focused on a person named Kim Yung Wan. However, to his surprise, sitting across from Kim was Old Kim's wife. Old Ha's brain had a momentary lapse, but he quickly realized that Old Kim's wife was also one of the masterminds behind the scenes. The other group included him and Kim Yung Wan. Glancing at the urn beside him, at that moment, his heart turned to ashes. And at that moment, Kim Yung Wan and Old Kim's wife also noticed him, but he chose to quietly depart. Those he believed were guilty turned out to be helpless victims, while those who seemed innocent were, in fact, the root of all evil. Old Ha couldn't distinguish anymore, and he didn't want to. On a late afternoon, he simply arrived at the pier, coercing the boatman to sail towards the direction of his home. However, how could a small fishing boat cross the vast yellow sea? Sitting in the cabin, Old Ha's eyes were vacant. He longed to hug his adorable daughter once more, to see his wife's smiling face again, and to live a dignified life. Yet, reality hadn't left many choices for a man like him. Due to excessive blood loss, Old Ha slipped into unconsciousness and was heartlessly thrown into the vast, tranquil expanse of the Yellow Sea by the boatman. To rest in the deep, serene waters of the Yellow Sea alongside his wife might be his best final destination. No voiceover can replicate the charm of the original film. A great movie deserves to be experienced in its full plot. Thank you for your watching and subscribing.